Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are talking about Phalaenopsis orchids with beautiful leaves. As you might know, Phalaenopsis are the most popular orchid on the market. You can find them in flower shops and garden centers. But once those flowers fade, which by the way is normal, then you're left with a plant that doesn't really strike you as the most decorative of all. And until you wait for the next blooming season, you could get a little bit bored of it. Well, fear not. There are on the market Phalaenopsis which have beautiful leaves, which will be absolutely showy even if they don't have flowers. And I have quite a few of them here. These are the ones I will talk to you guys about today. And before we start the subject, I'm sure that some of you will be curious to know where you can find stuff like these. Well, not in flower shops and garden centers, most likely. Special quote unquote orchids can be found at orchid nurseries. It doesn't mean they are more expensive or harder to get necessarily. You just have to know where to look. Best thing to do is to Google for an orchid nursery in your area because typically they don't ship overseas or to other economic territories. Alternatively, I do have a video talking all about purchasing orchids, how to find them, how much they cost, things of the sorts. I will link you to it down below in the description. So that said, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post three times a week. And let's just start with the orchid that looks most like a typical Phalaenopsis, leaf-wise at least. Here we have the Phalaenopsis bellina, which I know I said looks most like a typical Phalaenopsis, but it doesn't actually. It is a species, meaning it hasn't been obtained by humans, like the usual flower shop Phalaenopsis, and flower-wise it isn't that showy. It does have beautiful fragrant flowers though, it is just not the type that produces that wonderful cascade. This is a Polychylus subgenus of the Phalaenopsis, or we usually call it the summer blooming Phalaenopsis because it typically blooms in the summer rather than spring or winter, such as the flower shop Phalaenopsis. And besides the difference in flowers, there is quite a difference in the foliage as well. The Bellina produces much rounder leaves, and even though the color and pattern might be similar, there is a beautiful gloss to the Bellina leaves. This trait is actually pretty common with the Polychylus subgenus. The Bellina is not the only one with these beautiful glossy leaves, the Violacea as well, the Tetraspis, and quite a few others. However, the Bellina has the added bonus of the flower. Now, when the leaves first appear, they are the glossiest. Mine doesn't have brand new leaves at the moment, but you can see even these ones are pretty, pretty glossy. I did not treat it with leaf shine or anything of the sorts. I didn't even do my periodic oil treatment. I did not need to do it this year. So there is actually nothing on the leaves right now. They are naturally glossy. Of course, the better you treat this orchid, and by this I mean offering proper conditions, proper hydration, proper nutrients, and so on, the better the leaves will look like. But generally speaking, in comparison into normal Phalaenopsis, the Bellina, the Violacea, and other Polychylus types of Phalaenopsis have much, much glossier leaves. And I personally really, really like looking at these leaves, even if the orchid is not in bloom, which typically is in the cooler season. This orchid actually blooms in the summer. And of course, since it doesn't have very showy flowers, most likely you will not find this one in typical flower shops or garden centers, but it is really, 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 really common in orchid nurseries. And not only with private sellers as well, such as on eBay or other shops, but just do your research first, get a sense of what the typical pricing is in your area because you know how it is, some people like to inflate prices without any particular reason. So just do your research first, it is an affordable orchid, don't imagine three figures or anything of the sorts. Next Phalaenopsis, which looks quite similar to other typical Phalaenopsis, but not really, is this hybrid this time, it's not a species, this is Phalaenopsis Bashi Red Sun. And it is a so-called novelty hybrid, a polychylus hybrid once again. Can we see the leaves have that beautiful gloss? Glossy leaves are typically a giveaway that what you have there is a polychylus hybrid or species. But this particular hybrid has a bonus to the leaves. Can you see that the color is almost purpley red? It is a very dark green with very obvious hints of a purple tinge. Well, not all Phalaenopsis have this pigment or potentially show this pigment. 
Now, the red or purple colors in plants generally are determined by a pigment called anthocyanin. With orchids, this pigment can be in flowers, leaves, but also roots. And besides looking pretty, it also has a role in protecting the orchid from cold temperatures and, most of all, light. So, in order to obtain this really nice color tinge, proper or bright light is necessary. Now, I obtained this with grow lights. It's really not that hard to make this pigment obvious. You can obtain it with bright or filtered light as well. Phalaenopsis generally don't require very bright light, but yes, not all Phalaenopsis will display this much anthocyanin. Some people call the appearance of this pigment as sun stressing. It's not really, really stress. In some cases, it can signify that you are indeed offering proper light. In some cases, it can signify stress. Its appearance doesn't necessarily have to do anything with bad things, but some hybrids or species will have more of this pigment than others. As for the flowers of this particular orchid, they're not the showiest. They look a little bit like the Bellina, but they're a little bit paler. I do absolutely enjoy the leaves because they combine that glossiness that the Polychylus has with this beautiful dark red pigment, which is more typical for the flower shop Phalaenopsis rather than the Polychylus subgenus. Okay, let's get a little bit more dramatic. I'm sure you've been eyeing this particular one ever since the beginning of this video. This is actually a super, super popular species. This is Phalaenopsis schilleriana. And even though it might not look like a typical flower shop Phalaenopsis, it is the parent of many, many, many man-made hybrids that we can find in flower shops nowadays. This is because this particular species has the potential to produce very long branchy flower spikes with a ton of flowers on them. And guess what hybridizers are looking for? Yep, showy bloom shows. But take a look at the leaves. Now that is something else. Sadly, with hybridizing, the flowering trait has been maintained but not so much the pattern on the leaves. The Schilleriana is absolutely famous for her leaves, not so much her flowers, although the bloom show is spectacular as well. But even when this orchid is not in bloom, these leaves are just some of the most gorgeous leaves in the whole orchid kingdom, in my opinion. What I have here is quite a tiny orchid. This is a keiki of my original plant. The mother plant actually suffered from crown rot, sadly, but I was lucky enough to get a keiki. It can actually grow pretty large. The leaves can definitely reach normal big size Phalaenopsis size as well. And if you can imagine this beautiful pattern on them, well, it's easy to see how this orchid, I think might be collected more for the foliage than for its blooms. There is a little bit of variation with this species not all of them will look as intense, let's say, or as patterned as this one. There are some Schillerianas with a little bit more subtle pattern, but it is not something super rare or anything. Again, if you check orchid nurseries, I am pretty sure at some point you will find a Schilleriana because it is so incredibly popular and easy to grow. This one is not a summer bloomer. It takes the very same care as any other flower shop Phalaenopsis, plus the drop in temperature in winter time in order to initiate flower spikes. Mine actually has a tiny flower spike that just started to grow due to the natural cooling down of my climate. And the flowers, even though they might not necessarily be very colorful or showy, they are produced in great numbers in mature individuals, and they also have a subtle floral scent which again has been lost through hybridizing. But definitely if you love foliage plants and also love Phalaenopsis, but you don't really know how to combine the two worlds, the Schilleriana is just perfect for you. Next up here is a similar species to the Schilleriana. This is the Stuartiana. And as you can see, foliage wise, it's not very, very different but it does have a different coloration. Now, again, with this one, there is quite a lot of variation in cultivation. Mine is not necessarily the showiest. You can actually find Stuartianas with a little bit showier foliage than this, but this one has prettier flowers. It has yellow flowers, while the typical Stuartiana has white flowers. I will show you some footage of an older Stuartiana, which I don't have anymore, and you will see the differences between this one and the other one. 
So just like the Schillerianna, this one is a typical winter or spring bloomer. It takes the very same care as a typical Phalaenopsis. It needs a cool down in the winter. And again, just like the Schillerianna, it is a parent for many, many hybrids nowadays. Even though it is similar to the Schillerianna, it's not really identical. And if you have both of them, you will see that the roots are a little bit different. The flowers obviously are different. The Strachiana does not have very fragrant flowers. Mine actually has no scent at all. And even if the flowers are not very, very showy and they're not very large, definitely the foliage makes it a lot, a lot more interesting than a typical Phalaenopsis. Everything that I said about availability in orchid nurseries applies to this particular one as well. However, I do believe you can find in flower shops, if you're just super, super, super lucky, I think you can find either primary hybrids with the Stuartiana, either the Stuartiana itself. I don't know, seven years ago, I found mine in a flower shop, never saw it since, but if I found it, I'm pretty sure there are other people who can find it as well. But your best bet is with an orchid nursery, not with the flower shop. But what happens if you cross the Schillerianna with something else? Well, you get something like this. This is the Phalaenopsis Bronze Maiden, which is a primary hybrid between the Schillerianna we just saw and the Mani, which is a Polychylus subgenus orchid that has glossy green leaves. And being that currently it is hybridized through seeds as well as Mary cloning, you can find a lot of variety with this orchid. And this one, you can see that it does have a beautiful silver sheen to it, but also we have quite a lot of freckling, and just a little bit of that, let's say snake pattern that the Schillerianna has. It is absolutely gorgeous. And not only that, the flower is absolutely fantastic as well. And it's also fragrant. It resembles the Schillerianna in fragrance. It is a sweet, floral scent. I don't think it's very offensive, even if you have some issues with scent generally, but also because it is hybridized with a polychylus, look at the leaves. They are quite glossy in comparison to the Schillerianna. And just let me put them side by side, just so you see what I mean. We can see a little bit of resemblance, but the Schillerianna does not have glossy leaves at all. Sure, the newest leaves can be just slightly more glossy, typical behavior for typical Phalaenopsis as well, but this one is quite a lot glossier. So I do believe with this one, we got the best of both worlds. No matter if you enjoy the blooms or not though, you will have quite a lot of foliage interest throughout the year as well. Next up here, we have a variegated Phalaenopsis. Yes, they exist. They are not rare per se. You can definitely find them even in flower shops. We'll get to that. This is not a flower shop orchid, but of course, orchid nurseries are most likely to have this orchid. Mine is the Phalaenopsis Amabilis variety art, which is the variegated variety. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It is a marginal variegation type, which does not revert. I have never heard of Phalaenopsis reverting, such as other plants. In the orchid world, there are very few orchids which revert their variegation. Phalaenopsis don't. However, variegation is not super common within the species of Phalaenopsis. So if you're thinking you can find a variegated Schleriana, hmm, I doubt it exists. I have never heard of a variegated Bellina or Schleriana or things of the sort. So when it comes to the commonness within the species, it's not very common, but it doesn't mean that this orchid is rare. It isn't actually. And if you're lucky, you can actually find a hybrid which looks pretty similar in flower shops. It is the Sogo Vivian, which supposedly it's a mini orchid, although mine was pretty large for a miniature. I lost mine by the way, but it looks very, very similar to this one. I am not super sure how hardy that one is though. I can tell you that this one is pretty hardy and it's not a summer bloomer. It takes the very same care as any typical flower shop Phalaenopsis. The non-variegated variety of this species is actually a parent for many, 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 if not most, white Phalaenopsis on the market. And it is triggered into blooming by a cool down in winter. Mine actually has a flower spike, which is variegated as well. It's the cutest thing. So it's super, super easy to grow. And if you really like variegation, then this is the Phalaenopsis for you. The variegation is pretty yellow. It's not very, very white, which I guess would be wow, but 
this is super super beautiful as well so personally i do recommend that you find the amabilis rather than the sogo vivian just because i had a bad experience with it but if you have a sogo vivian and it's thriving and living its best life let us know in the comment section below so other people have a better idea about the sogo vivian as well and lastly, here we have another polykylus type, another summer bloomer. This is Phalaenopsis gigantea. It is a species and it is quite unique. It's very different from other polykylus types in the way of foliage. Yes, it is round. Yes, it is glossy. But oh my, look at that color. And I'm hoping that the camera can actually capture the true shade. It is a beautiful silver gray green, which is quite uncommon for Phalaenopsis orchids. Typically you will find either reddish, either just straight green foliage with Phalaenopsis. But this, even though it does not have a pattern, has such an interesting color to it. It's almost a little bit worrying. You would almost say that it is deficient of some nutrient, but it's not. It is its natural color. Now, the Gigantia, as the name suggests, will become gigantic. It does not refer to the flowers. It has beautiful flowers, but the flowers are not big. The orchid will become huge, humongous. If you Google this orchid, you will see how big the leaves can get, or rather how long. If I'm not mistaken, it is the biggest Phalaenopsis you can own. But you know what? It is not rare by any means. You can find it, again, in orchid nurseries. The only thing is that sometimes it's just not in stock. There are so, so, so many orchid varieties. If you consider all the other species as well, that nurseries rotate the varieties. So you will not necessarily have this one in stock all of the time because they need to stock some other very popular orchids as well and space is limited. So that's why you will not find them available all the time but do research multiple nurseries in your area. And if you really want something, try to make it a weekly thing. At some point, somebody will restock on the Gigantia. Trust me, it is one of the popular orchids that any orchid collector that likes species has. It is something else when you look at it and imagine this orchid when she will grow up. She will be such a statement piece. Bonus, did I tell you the flowers are fragrant and are beautiful? Yeah, mine never bloomed though. It is a new orchid for me, but I'm already super in love with it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it even if without flowers. Just take a look at this leaf. It is unbelievable. And this has been it for today. Sorry for the light fluctuations. The sky is very patchy today, but I will be sure to make some b-rolls with these orchids under the filming lights and give you close-ups of them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe you have some new orchids on your wish list. All of them are super, super easy to care for. Basic Phalaenopsis care minus that trigger with the flower spikes. That's the only difference between these orchids. Other than that, they all really like warm temperatures, medium light, and before I let you go, let me just quickly remind you about our Orchids at Heart campaign, our fundraiser campaign, which donates all profits to Doctors Without Borders. I'll link you to it down below. And with that said, thank you all for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more Orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun Orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well and I'll see you next time. Bye!